Welcome back to the vlog, everybody. We are in LA. I uh, made a pit stop here after my Baja run, and I'm here for a week. And well, the truck's still pretty muddy, and also I went through the ocean, so there's some saltwater action that was part of this uh, shenanigans. So we're gonna give the truck a quick wash in this uh, very prestigious car wash that we're at right now. And uh, then we're gonna get up to some, uh, some antics this week in the LA area. Let's get to washing. Well, we're mostly clean now, at least clean enough for the time being in LA. Uh, I'll have to give it a full detail when I get back to the Portland area, but uh, got a lot of the caked on Baja mud off, revealing certain things. Like we did get some chipping like here on the uh, painted fenders uh, that I did with the bed liner material, the Linex. Uh, you know, it's kind of expected. I did that a year ago, and uh, it actually is holding up pretty good. And it's one of those things that can be easily touched up, so I'm not too worried about that. Lots of pinstriping on the side of the truck. Ooh, those are war wounds right there. Uh, yeah, a lot of people freak out about that. I'm not sure if the camera can see it, but, you know, a couple of bushes tried to reach out and grab me on this trip. And down here is interesting. If you look on this side where my slot delete kit is, uh, you'll notice that it's perfectly symmetrical or it's very, you can see this, it's gotten beat up. It's definitely taken a couple of hits on this area, and so does my control arm, actually, on the paint. Powder coat's kind of taken a beating, but that's okay, that's what they're for, to get thrashed on. On this side, however, I dented this end completely on this side, which is saying something, and thank God for slot delete kits there. This one's also pretty thrashed on this side, but again, it adds character. Uh, and that's why you take it in the Baja and rally it. Uh, um, Fun times. All right. All in all, well and good. I'm pretty happy with how it performed in the Baja. Now, on to our next adventure. Today's LA obscurity. We have that thing. And getting some hardware because that's what Nick likes to do. Okay, Mr. Nicholas, have fun. Yay. What do you got here, Nick? All right, so uh, right now I'm trying to lift the edges of the bed rails so I can get down here and correct some of the uh, bent metal. And I'd like to throw a shout out to Sparrow's Lockpick Company for their door wedges. Because once you get one of these little buggers in there, yeah, lift just a tiny bit. Wow, there's a lot of damage under there. You can just start pumping it up. I am the test subject. I have made that apparent. You are the destroyer of worlds is what you are. Destroyer of off-road and overland parts, thank you. But, this allows me to get a nice bit of flex going, as you can see. Boop. That's why we use them to wedge, not hold. You might as well film this. <laughs> Meanwhile, in this episode of Nick and Brad Do LA, Nick wants an ice cream sandwich. Nick always wants ice cream. Ooh, do I get the watermelon? Oh, I'm getting the original bomb pop. Yeah. Hi. How's it going? Can I get an original bomb pop? Yes, sir. Here or to go? Uh, to go. To go. Take care, guys. Hey, thank you. I got ice cream pop. You might want to put one of those in the freezer unless oh, you're going to double fist one but right now. Do we put the rocket pop or do we eat Spider-Man? Nondescript superhero. <laughs> it's your choice, your choice alone, Nicholas. That was much needed. Try to film. Looks like most of the damage is down here in the aluminum, underneath the plastic. We broke every retaining point. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Oh well. And you can see the warpness 
in the bed rail where it pulled the bracket pulled out the bed rail from the truck basically yeah you can see all of this damage here all of this warping see all the chewed up mess right there all of this is because this thing just decided that it no longer wanted to stay attached Ooh, boy boy had it you grab it yep it's about what i expected perfect What are your machinations telling you now? Uh, time to start cross drilling. So we're going to drill literally all the way through this beam into the end of these guys to bolt them in place. That's the plan, kids. Let's see how it goes. So just to set clear of our expectations of what we're doing here, this is really just kind of a band-aid. Uh, right now we're just kind of getting it together so we know it's not going to fall apart on us the rest of this trip uh, and that we can still go out and hit a trail, you know, be between now and when we get back home. However, because of my experience in the Baja and my desire to build this into the best possible pre-lander I can make it, uh, having, you know, test-tuned and destroyed my gear, uh, it is going to make me re-envision what I need to have happen in the back of the truck for the bed right now. I love the Extrusion Overlands rack, I love the Retrax cover, but right now what this is telling me is that they're not rated for that level of abuse that you're going to find on those trails. And it's really about the constant vibrations that you're getting on those trails. Uh, and the, the speeds that you're going for the hours that you're out there. So we're going to see what we can do for the, uh, the bed in the future uh, to really make it as bulletproof as possible. It just may be a change up. And I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do with this setup alternatively, because I still like the tent, I still like the rack, but we may be able to repurpose it somewhere else, like maybe a trailer. So that might be something, an off-road trailer. Not something I would take on the Baja with me, but if I was gonna do a lighter overland trip where I'm not going high speed, that's where that comes in. And then rock something different that we have to envision for what the truck bed will look like. What I have to do is get this washer inside this hole under that lip. This washer is just wider than this hole. So it's gonna catch on the ridges. Eh, unlike ruffles, these ridges should hold everything in place. And this thing is, I don't know, 16th, uh, yeah, almost an eighth of an inch thick. So this might be a little homebrew. We'll call it homebrew. Uh, basically, we're taking a 12 inch steel rod threaded. I'm dropping it through with a large plate washer, a secondary washer, and actually two nylocks on the top. Dropping it down through a recessed hole in the body of the truck putting another washer on here and another nylock on the bottom and pinching the whole truck in place. So now that rack isn't going anywhere yet. Do not take this as a challenge, Brad. Well, I mean, it's a Band-Aid. I mean, it's, it's, it's to rally one more time here in the desert and then get us home and then reevaluate, right? And then once we redo this at home, we're gonna use a much different mounting system if we keep the retracks on the truck. All of this is theoreticals towards future plans, but this will hold. If I had a different anchor system, I'd prefer one that expands out into the stake hole itself, which is bolted into the body of the truck, so I don't have to go all the way down like this, and I don't have to use multiple nylocks at the top. A long bolt, say six inches, would do the same thing. If you get it in a grade, say eight, grade 8.8, .8, you don't want a grade 12, it's too, it's gonna fracture too easily. You need something that's got a bend to it. I'd rather have it bend than crack. Uh, you could actually do this to mount this down, and this may have saved us a lot of headache in the Baja, but we'll never know. Last minute maintenance thing we wanted to check before we uh, stop for the night, because we're going to need to clean it first. That's an air filter. That's what it's supposed to look like. After the Baja. Before the Baja. After the Baja. That's chunks of just mud. It's an entire desert. Even just knocking that much dust out. I hope Customs doesn't see this because we probably have to have some paperwork to bring this much Mexico into the <laughs> yeah, Even just that. Country. I, I've got a... What is that? That's a knuckle deep. That much dust. We're gonna need to clean that. Ah, oh, 
TRX. Yeah. I'm bearing gifts. How's it going? What's this? And here we have? What's this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it's keep it dirty color. Too. <laughs> How's it going, man? Good to Very meet you. Very scarf. <laughs> Copy, right hand side. Copy. Just a calm, mellow drive in the Mojave. No big deal. It's actually pretty relaxing. And greetings, everybody. We are here in the Mojave, uh, just hanging out. We got a little tiny run here going on. I'm with uh, Mr. Helio from Keep It Dirty Off-Road, and I'm gonna have this man introduce himself. You're here with us. My name is Trayvon, it's my truck, my T-Rex. And your dog. Yeah. <laughs> Trayvon of the T-Rex, and uh, we're here at the uh, little uh, fuselage of a airplane here in the Mojave, and we're just having a leisurely day on the trails to get some footage. Uh, meet up for the first time, uh, dueling YouTube channels or collaborative YouTube channels. <laughs> and like when I because you can ignore all the other hand, all the other handles are useless. All you need is this. When I see guys doing this off road, that's crazy. No, that's how you snap a wrist. I don't think through here. It's like it's industrial. We are. I'm thinking. Uh, and now I'm going to think. system it makes perfect sense intercom is powered and all your mics run through it mic check now mic i can check. actually hear you <laughs> the dumbass that installed it on this truck put it way over there oh because you know that's convenient for your short little arms to reach <laughs> Literally at the entrance to Edwards Air Force Base, kids. That's cool. This is a Bradley in his natural habitat. For his favorite habitat. Uh, it's doing just a leisurely drive in the Mojave. Yeah. It's actually pretty relaxing. Currently we are going about, uh, get in there, about 50, 55 miles an hour. Nice after, and paced. After doing Baja, like a, last weekend and now this, it's like, this is pretty, pretty relaxing. <laughs> yeah, 50, 55 off-road, yeah. nice and relaxing, nothing too crazy. Just going slow. Let me see the microphone. How do we miss a turn, fearless leader? <laughs> Taking a little pit stop on the trail to investigate the Ram's uh, possible rubbing issue on the passenger front tire. I bottomed out at the top earlier when we had uh -huh. the ditch. Oh yeah, yeah. So I got That'll that happen. Part pretty good. Good times. <laughs> detour at the Boneyard out here in Mojave. Super cool place where uh, they park or retire airliners. Now we are at the air up phase of the trip at the end of this trail for Mojave. Thanks to Helio for taking us out in Mojave area on my visit down to Southern California. Yeah, and uh, now we got to get him up, up to Oregon to go camping. <laughs> I actually like it up there, man. Yeah. Oregon, Washington area, I love it up there.
So all in all, that trip was 3,710 miles. And that's a combination of off-road and highway. I would, I would speculate that at least 1,200 of those miles are off-road miles. I can say that pretty confidently. Uh, and we've got 11.4 miles per gallon. On the way down on the highway, I was getting about 12.9 miles per gallon in my Overland spec rig. Uh, and then with the off-roading uh, mixed into the highway miles, we're down to 11.4. Total mileage on my truck right now is 69,366 miles. And that's what we're dealing with right now, folks. So there you have it. We're getting into that high mile territory, but I wanted to take a minute to talk about how impressed I am with the performance of the truck uh, with all 3,700 of those miles mechanically and performance wise. Uh, it had no issues whatsoever. And also the uh, suspension was just beyond my expectations in terms of how it performed in the Baja and then in Mojave as well. The only crux is that retracts cover uh, and how it buckles into the, uh, the, the bed rails, which are not very strong. Uh, so we're gonna have to reevaluate what we do with our overland setup in the back if I intend to go back to Baja or the Mojave on a regular basis, because I need something that's gonna be able to not shake apart on me on the trail. Uh, so if you like this content, uh, we're gonna continue to innovate and do some trail runs and try and make this the best possible freelander that I can make it. And please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.